It's good to have you join me on the program. I am Mary Kanu. A week after the Supreme Court ordered the Nigerian government to allow the continued use of the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, President Muhammadu Buhari has countered that order. The president in a national broadcast on Thursday morning while acknowledging the many difficulties that the new currency policy is causing Nigerians approved the continued use of only the old 200 Naira notes as a legal tender alongside the new 200 Naira notes. But this this will only be for 60 days as orders by the president allowed the validity of the old 200 Naira notes until the 10th of April 2023. President Buhari also said that in line with Section 20, Subsection 3 of the CBN Act of 2007, all existing old 1,000 and 500 Naira notes remain redeemable at the CBN and designated points. The initial deadline to phase out the old notes was Friday the 10th of February. The president's pronouncement comes as the Supreme Court had last week given an interim order for the continued use of all the old notes until it finally rules on a lawsuit brought by three northern states challenging the new currency redesign. In its sitting on Wednesday, the Supreme Court did not reverse that order, but the court adjourned the suit to February 22nd. While President Buhari's decision may have served as some form of respite amid the chaos caused by the CBN's Naira redesign policy, some lawyers and civil society groups across the country have faulted the broadcast on the 200 Naira note as contempt of court. Now, to give more insights on the issue, legal expert Malaki Ogumadu joins me on the program. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, first of all, I must ask what you think of the president's speech and um, its possible effect on the country. Do you think the president speaking to us will somehow assuage the frayed nerves of Nigerians? Should Nigerians generally expect better when it comes to the Naira going forward? Well, I think my response would be that in so many respects and for so long, President Muhammad Buhari has come so little, so short, and too late in the day mm. regarding major national developments, some of which have the tendency of undermining the security of this country. So why would it have taken him this long mm. to be able to give a proper direction with respect to a major financial uh, activity of a cardinal agency of government like the central bank. Uh, let's be clear about it. The, the Central Bank Act recognizes the powers of the governor of the central bank to act in respect of monetary policy. But in this particular instance, of withdrawal and change of the currency with the approval of the president. That is within the, the remit and powers of the central bank government, with the approval of the president. All of those happen. Where the issue has always been now cascading into a, a national crisis is the implementation of that policy. It has come not with a human face. It has mm -hmm. caused a lot of hardship, mm -hmm. dislocation, and demobilization of the Nigerian people. So much so that for the first time in my life, I now hear that you could use Naira to buy Naira. The quick case, mm -hmm. you are giving less the value of the money you, are, you, you, you seek to get if you have no cash of your own. You will have to buy it at a higher rate. That, that for me was it. Now, but what is more, it is that even with the policy they, that they have conceived to be a good policy, based on the objective conditions that they wanted to check, but it has not worked out completely in the way that, um, a manner that they conceived it. Now, when you realize that kind of situation, what do you do? You retreat. Now, it has taken riots, I'm not talking of protests, riots mm. from cities after cities, 
before Mr. President. In short, people were reportedly killed in Benin yesterday. I am from Delta State. I just returned from Delta State. There are accounts of people who dropped dead on the queue waiting to be able to assess their money in the past. Very regrettably, even when you gain entrance at very risky, in very risky circumstances and at great cost to your life, you are giving 5,000 naira. So the point I make is that um, the president has decided to talk and a very, I'm not sure how it was more than 20 minutes uh, broken. Uh, we're not talking for a lengthy whole day broker, but to what extent has that now coincided with the uh, responsibility of another arm of government with the judiciary this time, the hardest court, in trying to find a way around this situation? In many respects, and within the circle of the lawyer, there are people who hold the view, and rightly too in my view, that the president focus has amounted to a contempt of court, in the sense that the, the, the Supreme Court was clear with respect to their uh, earlier uh, order, interlocutory order, expertise order, and that order was extended in a way, and before the expiration of that extension, Mr. President has come to give another condition. Uh, now, so, before we get to the legal aspect of this, uh, we saw you, you mentioned, uh, sorry to cut you, before we get to the legal aspect of this, um, you mentioned the riots that have taken place in the country, and we saw something like this happen in 1984 on the, the Buhari legend. Uh, but now let's talk about the issue on ground. There are now two existing orders guiding the use of the Naira in the country. One by the CBN authorizing the validity of all currencies until its next hearing, which was shifted to February 22nd, and that of President Buhari authorizing the use of only the 200 Naira notes alongside the new notes. Which order supersedes the order? Well, we are called a civilized nation because we are expected to conduct the affairs of this country according to rule and law. Where the rule of law no longer operates, that the rule of man, then clearly there are problems. Otherwise, this question would not have come. Ideally, where there is any form of disputation with respect to the policy or decision of state actors or government, and that dispute is submitted to a competent court of law, this time as permissible, being a dispute between and among states and the federation, they proceeded advisedly to the Supreme Court. Once that dispute is apprehended, once the Supreme Court becomes seized of that dispute, from that moment, the orders and decisions of the court shall take precedence over every other. In short, and as a matter of law, it is almost inconceivable that while a, ma while a matter is subjudice and being attended to in the Supreme Court of the land, the executive being the other arm of government is busy giving directives that contradict. There is no other recipe for anarchy. In short, people are now confused. Otherwise, the answer to your question is that once a directive, either by way of ruling or by way of order or by way of judgment or by way of decision, by a competent court of law, this around the apex court in the land is issued Every person, every authority, every agency of government is bound. And on this call, I am referencing section 287, subsection 1 
with respect to the decisions of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Supreme Court. Mm. The detail for Court of Appeal, High Courts of the respective federal states. So, it, it's not, uh, except we are no longer in a civilized nation, it is now becoming debatable. So in, in uh, other words, the, in other words, you're trying to say, or what you're trying to say is that um, with all that we've seen play out, that this administration, the Buhari-led administration, has endangered the rule of law and uh, brought the judiciary to disrepute. Is this what you're saying? If that is not the case, why the chaos? Why are people running amount? Why is even the ruling political party talking at cross purposes? Why is the center not holding? Why do we not have a singular channel of, of decision and, and, uh, and action? Why, why this cacophony of voices? What has happened to the coordination and cooperation of institutions of government with a harmonized view to promote peace and development and progress in the country? So I'm not trying to say, I am saying mm. that once a matter has become a subject of litigation and adjudication for a competent court of law, whatever that court comes out with becomes superior. Mm. Because whatever the court says becomes an order. It becomes a ruling. And by the constitution, I have reference section 287 talks on one, two, three, anyone and every institution and every citizen and every authority in this country is obligated under a duty to obey what the Supreme Court has said. No less the president. The president is a citizen of this country and he's not above the law. The law is as pronounced by the Supreme Court. So if we are, if we are not comfortable with that, then we are beckoning at anarchy. We are looking at the last bustle before the kind of violence you see from city to city. Now, some have come out. We've seen uh, lawyers and um, civil society organizations, you know, they've come out to fault the implementation of the redesign policy by the CBN. Although, according to the Apex Bank, this move was made to curb vote buying ahead of the elections and somehow reduce inflation. Do you think there should be a time frame for the completion of this implementation? Well, this is the need... I mean, this question speaks to the need for a well thought out policy. Hmm. I mean, you cannot, in good conscience, be charitable to the government as represented by the central uh, central bank in this instance. You cannot fault the motive and objective of this uh, policy. In the sense that, and we have even began to, to witness it, talking about engendering a cashless society, dealing with the incidence of uh, illicit uh, transfer of money amongst terrorist groups, talking about strengthening the, the, the economy, and the practice vote buyers, albeit politicians, from having access to the kind, the volume of money with which they corrupt the system. These are credible master strokes. However, you may have a great idea, a beautiful idea, but if you lack the mechanisms and strategies of operationalizing that idea, in a way that doesn't cause social disruption, it will turn out as though you never touched through that idea. This is precisely the problem with this matter. Come to think about it, we were told that the actual volume of Naira running into trillions needed to have been reprinted 
was not made available. In short, it is almost a one thought of what was needed that was printed. That kind of indiscretion in managing a very fragile economy like ours, suffering and smarting from serious bashing of so many economic uh, indices that are not fit for room for growth and development, it became one mistake too many. Because as it has now shown, it has completely disrupted the, 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 the entire chain of livelihood in Nigeria. All right. Where yeah. people have money to work hard, but cannot assess their money. Uh, like so you I'm clearly clear pointed out, you. the issues abound. You've clearly pointed this out, but I'm afraid that's how much we can take right now. Well, Malaki Ogumadu, legal expert, thank you for your time and your insights. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, we'll take a break now and be right back. Just stay with us.